Good morning and a very warm welcome. You are watching Janata Television and this is English Bulletin with me, Yutsa Bhatrai. The top stories first. Hearing on House resolution to continue today, more than 350 lawyers to plead on behalf of the petitioners. Upendra Yadav blames Prime Minister for the current political crisis, demands punishment for violating the constitution. India to provide 1 million vials of COVID-19 vaccine to Nepal, help workers and security personnel to get the shots in the first phase. US President Biden rolls back Trump policies, issues a new executive order on wall, climate, health and Muslims. And Manchester United reclaims top spot in Premier League. Manchester City move up to second in the table. And now the news in detail. Hearing on the REIT petitions filed against the dissolution of the Law House is scheduled to continue for the fifth day today. The Constitutional Bench has been holding continuous hearing on the REIT petitions since Sunday. A report. Nine lawyers, including senior advocates Chandrakanta Gewali, Krishna Prasad Bhandari, Kanchan Krishna Neopane, Anita Manandar, Chala BK, challenged the dissolution of House of Representatives in the Apex Court yesterday. Yesterday's hearing began with Advocate Chandrakanta Gewali stating that Article 76 of the Constitution does not confer the Prime Minister with the right to dissolve the House of Representatives. Similarly, Senior Advocate Krishna Prasad Bhandari alleged the Prime Minister of sacrificing the lower house due to growing internal rift within his party. Advocate Kanchan Krishna Neopane demanded the court to stop Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli from giving remarks that would influence the court. In response, Chief Justice Cholendra S.J.B. Rana clarified that the court's duties would not be affected by a speech given by the leader of a political party. For today, the bench has limited the pleading time to 30 minutes. The time limit has been imposed to prevent the advocates from pleading for long hours. More than 350 lawyers from the petitioner's side have decided to plead in the same case. In other news, Chairman of Janata Samajwadi Party Nepal, Upin Rayadav, has said that the case should be filed against Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli for violating the constitution. Addressing a protest rally in Rajbiraj of Saptari district, chairman of the party Yadav said that the whole world, including the former justices, have been saying that Oli's move was unconstitutional and that the prime minister should be prosecuted for violating the constitution. Claiming that Prime Minister Oli had dissolved the House of Representatives to end democracy and federalism, Yadav also warned of a people's outrage if the court ruled against the people's expectation. Senior leader of the party, Rajendra Mahato, claimed that the Prime Minister looks at Madesi people and their struggle with aversion. He further added that damaging the relationship between India had a detrimental effect on the Madesi people a decision for which the Prime Minister has no remorse for. The Government of India has announced to provide COVID-19 vaccines to Nepal. According to government officials, the vaccine will be arriving in Nepal today. Minister for Health and Population Ridesh Tripathi yesterday confirmed that India will be providing 1 million vials of vaccine to Nepal as grant assistance. Speaking at a press conference, Minister Tripathi informed that legal, administrative and financial issues have been resolved to begin vaccination drive in the country as soon as possible. The government has estimated that 72% of the total population of Nepal will require vaccines, added Minister Tripathi. <laughs> को को कोरोना उन्नाइस विरुद्ध को खोप अनुदान में उपलब्ध कराए कुछ है भारत सरकार ले धन्यवाद दीना चाहन्छु रा 
नेपाली समग्र दाजु भाई दीदी बहनी और लाई मैं विश्वास गराना चाहिए चु खूब अभियान सफलता पूर्वक संचालन करना मंत्रालय इसका सभी साथी औरों योद्धा रूप तैयार होने उनसा रहामे ढीलो नगरी का ना इसलाय अगाडी बनाऊं ने सम Minister Tripathi further said that health workers, sanitation workers, security personnel, ambulance drivers will be the first to receive the vaccine. Coronavirus has claimed six more lives in the country, taking the death toll to 1,975. The government yesterday confirmed 318 new cases of coronavirus across the country. Following the latest round of tests, the total cases of coronavirus in the country have climbed to 268,310, while the number of active cases has dropped to 3,693. According to the Ministry of Health and Population, altogether 262,642 infected persons have recovered from the disease in the country so far. Nepal is currently among the top 42 countries that have been most affected by the pandemic. The US tops the list with 24.99 million confirmed cases, followed by India with 10.61 million cases. Coronavirus has infected more than 97.27 million people across the world and claimed over 2.8 million lives. Police have nabbed a group involved in the sale and purchase of a narcotic drug brown sugar in Kathmandu Valley. According to the Narcotics Control Bureau of Nepal Police, nine individuals have been arrested for trading the psychotropic substance in the valley. The police yesterday made public the drug peddlers along with 536.5 grams of brown sugar seized from the accused. Police have also seized a drug measuring scale from the peddlers. Similarly, cash worth 6,712 rupees, it is rather 6,712 rupees, 6,001 American dollars and three vehicles used for peddling the drugs have also been seized by the police. Nepal police has been searching for such organized groups running drug business within the valley, the bureau informed. अनुसंधान करते ही जाता है कि हमने कई व्यक्तियों को पकड़ो करें सब रा लागू औसत खाई रोज रहीं इन जरिये मात्र में इस सम्मो को हिसाब में नेपाल में बरामद करें को मध्य में और इस सम्मो को मध्य में सब बंदा दे रही परिमाण में हमने बरामद करें का सम तो संसद में कई पैसा आ रहे हैं नेपाली पैसा विदेशी पैसा यूएस डॉलर the arrested individuals have confessed to selling one gram of heroin for up to 10,000 rupees. And now the news from Economic Fund. Preparations have now begun for the establishment of chemical fertilizer factory in Nepal. A meeting held at the Ministry of Finance attended by Finance Minister Vishnu Prasad Baudal, Minister for Industry, Commerce and Suppliers Lekhraj Pata, Minister for Agriculture and Livestock Development Padma Kumari Aryal and Government Secretaries discussed preparations for setting up a chemical fertilizer factory in Nepal. The meeting discussed about the technology behind the production and the cost of selling up such a factory. The technologies and methods prevalent in the world, natural gas, water, electrolysis and hybrids are some technologies discussed in the meeting to determine the methods suitable for Nepal. Finance Minister Baudel has said that he will prepare a proposal on the technology, investment method and cost related to the establishment of chemical fertilizer factory in Nepal after further discussion. A meeting at the Council of Ministers held on October 8 had formed a committee under the coordination of Finance Minister Baudel to conduct a preliminary study on the establishment of a chemical fertilizer plant in Nepal. And now, the international news. Mm -hmm. 
Joe Biden signed 15 executive actions shortly after being sworn in as the new U.S. president on Wednesday. Biden has rolled back the orders issued by his Republican predecessor Donald Trump on the pandemic and climate change. According to Reuters, Biden said there was no time to waste in issuing the executive orders, memorandums and directives while signing several actions in front of reporters in the Oval Office on Wednesday afternoon. Some of the executive actions I'm going to be signing today are going to help change the course of COVID crisis, said Biden. These are just old starting points, he added. Aides said the actions the Democratic president signed in included a mask mandate for federal employees and halting the process of withdrawing from the World Health Organization. Biden signed a document to begin the process of re-entering the Paris Climate Accord and issued a sweeping order tackling climate change, including revoking the presidential permit granted to contentious Keystone 11 oil pipeline. Among a raft of orders addressing immigration, Biden revoked Trump's emergency declaration that helped fund the construction of a border wall and ended a travel ban on some majority Muslim countries. United Nations agencies are warning that more than 350 million people in the Asia-Pacific region are going hungry as the coronavirus pandemic destroys jobs and pushes food prices higher. The report issued on Wednesday by four agencies says the pandemic is making it difficult for 1.9 billion people to afford healthy diets, AB reported. It follows an earlier report that forecast 828 million people might suffer from acute hunger because in worst case scenario, the latest estimate is that nearly 688 million people globally are undernourished, more than half of them in Asia. The largest share is in South Asian countries like Afghanistan, where 4 in 10 people are malnourished, AP further reported. The report is mostly based on data up to 2019 before the pandemic struck. But it also estimates that an additional 140 million people were likely to have fallen into extreme poverty in 2020 due to the impact of virus outbreaks and lockdowns. By the end of last year, some 265 million people were estimated to face acute food insecurity. You are watching Janata Bulletin and now the latest from the world of sports. Manchester United defeated Fulham by 2-1 to reclaim the top spot in the Premier League after losing it to Manchester City for a couple of hours. The Red Devils fell behind early in the game with Admala Lukman beating the offside trap before firing in an angled drive to give the Cottagers the lead. Manchester United came back into the game after a neat finish from Edison Cavani in the 21st minute. The game was sealed in the 65th minute when Paul Pogba slotted home the second goal from just outside the box with his left foot. The three points taken the, the three points rather take United to 40 points to Aver City who are in the second spot with a game in hand. Earlier City took the top spot from United after beating Austin Villa 2-0. Two late goals from a banana from Bernardo Silva and Aikai Gondogan helped City defeat a defensively well-drilled Aston Villa side. City now have 38 points after winning seven consecutive games in the Premier League. Today, Liverpool will look to bring their title aspiration back on track after securing just six points from the last five games. They are on 34 points and remain fourth in the table. Cristiano Ronaldo scored the 760th goal of his career, earning a possible world record as Juventus beat Napoli to win the Italian Super Cup. 
the Portuguese the Portugal forwards goal may have seen him overtake a disputed total for Joseph Beckham to become the highest scorer of all time. Ronaldo has scored five goals for Sporting Lisbon, 118 for Manchester United, 450 for Real Madrid, 85 for Juventus and 102 for Portugal. Although there's some unclear data about Bicon's final goal tally. Sports satisfaction, it is rather sports a status Sports statistics continue to say he scores 759 goals and not 805 claimed by other sources. The final goal tally for both the Brazilian Romario and Pele is also disputed by many, but the official goal tally stands as 757 and 755 respectively. Messi is 41 goals behind Ronaldo at 719 career goals. The title is Juventus' ninth Super Cup win. We are at the end of Chanata Bulletin and the headlines once again. Hearing on House resolution to continue today, more than 350 lawyers to plead on behalf of the petitioners. Uben Riyadh claims Prime Minister for the current political crisis demands punishment for violating the constitution. India to provide 1 million vials of COVID-19 vaccine to Nepal, health workers and security personnel to get the shots in the first phase. US President Joe Biden rolled back Donald Trump policies, issues new executive orders on wall, climate, health and Muslims. And Manchester United reclaims top spots in Premier League, Manchester City moved up to second in the table. And that's all from the English News Desk for today. You can follow Jonathan Television and our programs on various social media platforms, including on our website, jonathasamatra.com. Keep watching Jonathan Television. Namaste.